cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and hopefully you guys saw my original Slingo video, because it's one of the coolest things I've managed to do with my 3D printers. And I told you guys I was really eager to do some more exploration with it, and I wasn't kidding, because I'm back, and I'm doing more Slingos. So this time, I've finessed my Fusion 360 skills a bit, and I've been able to make some more advanced things, like this Skull Slingo. Yeah. I took this low poly skull model I found on Thingiverse, shared by user Slavic, which was remixed from another skull, and that was remixed from another skull, and so on. And, well, I took it a step further and turned it into a slingo. Here you can see this awesome skull springo printing out. And just like all my other springos, it doesn't rely on support material or anything. There's just a slight gap in between each layer of the springo that you have to separate afterwards manually. The first layer can be really tough to separate, and in this case I had to use a box cutter, and then I went back to the spatula to separate the rest of the model. This process can be time consuming and it's definitely nerve wracking, but the end result is so cool that it's totally worth it. This was printed using Matterhacker's Glow in the Dark PLA, which makes it just that much more awesome. In today's video, I'm going to show you the steps in Fusion 360 to turning just about any model into a Slingo, kind of like this. But first... Giant Slingo! This massive Slingo was printed on my brand new Lulzbot Taz 6 using Rigid Ink PETG plastic, and it's got some pretty cool tricks that it can do. Needless to say, this thing is ridiculously cool, and I'm totally in love with it. If you guys also happen to have a massive 3D printer and a lot of filament to spare, I'll have this file available on my mini factory, so you can download it for free, along with these other Slingos. Here's that giant Springo printing out, and I actually designed it specifically for this TAS6 printer, making the model as tall as the build volume for this printer. But what I hadn't considered was that the entire model uses more than the entire one kilogram spool of filament, so I ran out about 110 hours into the print. But luckily it's a Springo and it's just a repeating design, so I can definitely still use it, even though it's technically not the full model. Even after the build plate was completely cooled down, this was pretty tough to remove, and it did leave a little bit of a defect on the PEI build surface, but it doesn't seem to have affected print quality afterwards. Then it's on to the laborious task of separating all those layers, which of course is magnified by the fact that this is a giant Springo. It's a lot of work and it didn't take long for me to get my first break. While the Task 6 has a bunch of profiles specifically designed for their printer using different plastics, they don't have one yet for PETG, so I had to come up with my own settings. And I think I got those off by just a bit causing some of the layers to fuse together a little too much. Of course, this print took several days and I'm not just gonna throw it out. So I decided to use some PETG filament through my 3D pen to try to weld the parts back together. I identified the areas where I cracked the model and then just created a big glob of hot PETG plastic to fill in that crack. Then I put my spatula in between the layers to keep them separate and applied a lot of pressure to try to get it as flat and smooth as possible. So great, that works, but it doesn't change the fact that I still had many, many hours of labor separating and welding layers together to complete this springo. I really should have printed a smaller test print before going for this massive 100 hour print. But hey, there it is, I did it, and I think the end result was still totally worth it, because it's unbelievably cool. The amount of energy contained within these springos is pretty insane. Of course the ultimate test is if it can run down a staircase, but the problem is this springo is taller than a stair step, so that doesn't quite work. I had to find other means. Ooh. <laughs> 
Alright, that's awesome. So what's left to do but really test the limits of this spring though? Let's just say I wasn't surprised by these results. But I was pretty surprised at how strong the PETG was. Yeah, okay, it did shatter, but only at the parts where it was welded with that 3D pen. Overall, it held together really well. All right, that was fun, but now I wanna teach you guys how to make these complex springos like this skull. I'll use my own model for this tutorial, but the process is generally the same for whatever you wanna turn into a springo. So I'm gonna open up Fusion 360, and the first thing I'll do is right click up here and select do not capture design history. That's just a little thing you gotta do in order to be able to bring in an STL file. So you're gonna go to insert mesh and bring in your file. Here you can see I've got this familiar twisty shape, not too different from my twist containers. So I brought that STL in and then I can flip the direction to make it standing upright. And then I'll also select move to ground, that way it's sitting on the top plane. I'll hit OK, and then I'll just go ahead and confirm that it is in fact sitting on that top plane. And I'll also make sure that it's centered about the origin. The next thing we'll do is switch from the model environment into mesh mode, which allows us to modify this mesh here. From the select menu, I'll choose window selection and just select the entire mesh. And then I'll go to modify and reduce the mesh. Basically, I wanna lower the number of triangles in this model, that way Fusion 360 doesn't crash when I try to convert this into a Slingo. For a low poly model like that skull, you might not have to do this. But this twisty form did have a lot of triangles because it's got those rounded forms, and I wanted to reduce it as much as possible. So you can see there are now a lot fewer triangles, but the shape is still generally the same. Great, so now we can go back into model mode and right click on this mesh and convert it into a B-Rep, which is basically a solid body in Fusion 360. There we go, and I actually kind of like all the facets that are created by this reduction. All right, from here on out, things aren't too different from my original Springo tutorial in my last video. I'm gonna use this Helix Spline add-on that I downloaded for Fusion 360 and then I'll create two helixes once again for the inner and outer diameter of my springo. This time I just want to make sure that the inner diameter is smaller than the inner diameter of my twisted form. As you can see from the top here, and then I'll make another one and just make sure it surrounds the entire shape as well. Alright, looks good. We can go ahead and hide this body for now. And now we're just going to go ahead and create that springo sweep connecting the two endpoints of the different helixes. And since we had that two millimeter pitch, we're gonna make this 1.75 millimeters tall to have a 0.25 millimeter gap in between the layers. I'll go to sweep, make sure that's got a path and a guide rail, and then select the inner helix as the path and the outer as the guide rail. Fusion will chug along and make that spring go. Okay, before we combine those shapes, I'm actually gonna split up this first model so that the top and bottom are solid and only the stuff within this rectangle will be converted into a spring. That's gonna be especially useful if you have a model that is capped at the top or bottom like the skull is because you don't want the spring to go all the way to the very top. In this case, we're just gonna make it three millimeters from the top and bottom that will remain solid. I'll exit that sketch, hit S, and type in split. Then I'll use the split body command, use that rectangle as my splitting tool, and the twist as my splitting body. Now you can see that shape has been separated into three different shapes. I'll hide that top and bottom cap, and I'll also bring back my spiral helix. Then I will use the combine tool, and select intersect. Then I can select both that helix, and the twist form. Then Fusion will go ahead and combine those parts, leaving only the areas where both of those models intersect. The result is a form that looks just like that twisted shape, but with that helical gap running all the way through the shape. It's a pretty complex form, and depending on your computer, it might crash Fusion. 
just make sure that you're saving pretty often. Okay, at this point we just want to bring back those top and bottom sections and then combine it all into a single part. But as you can see here, as a result of that mesh reduction process, the top and bottom surfaces of these end caps aren't completely flat. They've still got all these little triangular facets. The easiest way to fix that is just doing another extrude cut and slicing a tiny bit of material off the bottom and top until we have a flat surface again. So I'll just make this tiny rectangle and I'll give it a 0.5 millimeter height off the bottom of that surface and then I'll do the same for the top. I'll do an extrude using that sketch and make sure it's set to cut and the result is a nice single flat surface on the top and bottom just as we hoped for. With those looking good, we'll bring back the middle springo part, hit S, type combine, and then merge all those parts together into one single springo. That's it, we've got ourselves a new twist springo. So I'll right click on that body and export it as an STL file. Here we have that Springo printed out once again on my TAS6 using PLA plastic. And I also created this outer shell printing in vase mode to create a nice tight fitting container for the Springo. It's kind of tight, but that was actually the least of my worries because this time around the PLA fused really well, like way too much. It took a crazy amount of effort to just get one ring separated from this helix. And it wasn't long before I screwed up and split the whole thing in half. Well, unfortunately, this Swingo didn't quite work out. The layers just stuck together way too much. So it might be a matter of changing the print settings or going back into Fusion and increasing that gap between the layers a little bit more. I think I might have to try that again sometime in the future. Nevertheless, I still stand by the general process I went through to make this Slingo. After all, it's pretty much the exact same thing I did for the skull. It's just sometimes you have to iterate to design. It's very rare that things work out on the first try, so that's life. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something and maybe you can even make all these Slingos on your own by now. But you're always free to download them for free on my mini factory as well. Until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. No. <laughs>